Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. That was unexpected. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the vlog. I'm going to be feeding all my animals in this episode. So we're going to be feeding my catfish. There's a red-tailed catfish, real small, and a shovel-nose hybrid with a red-tailed catfish that I've got in here as well. We have the guppies and minnows acclimating to the water so they can feed upon them and whatever doesn't get eaten, they can stay in the tank, thrive, and take care of the tank by cleaning up the poop and any algae. And we're also going to be feeding my snakes, my turtles, and a lot of other cool stuff. So stick around. See, I already see some fish that passed away, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little guy right here, I'm going to hand feed these catfish. Check this out. Look at this. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Huh? Oh, did you see that? This right here is a tiger shovel nose mixed with a red-tailed catfish. It's a hybrid. It's supposed to get bigger than tiger shovel nose. So, I want to make sure he's nice and well-fed. Who's a good catfish? Who's a good catfish? Come on, little catfish. Come on, little catfish. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yummy, 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 yummy. Oh! Now you're probably wondering what that is right there. No, it's not an alligator. This is what's called a smooth front caiman. They're from South America. All caiman species are found in South America. Now, they come from a family called crocodilians, the same family as alligators. So there's four major groups, and there's 24 different species. Those four major groups. Gharial from India, crocodiles found in most tropical areas, caimans that are all found in South America, and the alligators. Only two species of alligator, American and Chinese. Now the smooth front caiman, I'm very stoked because this is my first crocodilian I've kept under my permit that I just got in. Uh, to own crocodilians in the state of Florida, you have to work with them for at least a thousand hours under somebody else with a permit to own crocodilians. So I've been working with these animals since I was 14 years old. They are not pets. I'm going to use them for educational shows. And I'm going to use them for these videos to educate you guys about these awesome reptiles. Now I'm very stoked because he just got here and he's already munching down on a pinky. So I know he's going to do well. Nice warm water, plenty of fish, lots of hiding spots. I'm going to put more live plants in here. And it's going to be a very nice setup while he's this small uh, at hatchling state. Now this species usually gets anywhere from 4 to 5 feet long. They're not massive like big crocs. They don't get that big. That being said, the world's smallest crocodilian is a caiman. It's a Cuvier's dwarf caiman. And we're probably going to get one here soon too. Now let's see what else is hungry. This right here is my favorite species of turtle. It's the Mata Mata turtle. Now its name means kill, kill. And what's funny is in South America, since it has such an interesting look, uh, for the very unattractive girls that are in South America, the guys will call those girls Mata Matas. So if your sister's annoying you, call her a Mata Mata. Now I'm going to feed this guy. I've had him for quite a while now and he likes me a lot. He'll eat out my hands. He engulfs them. They don't have a lot of jaw pressure like a snapping turtle. All they do is kind of like a catfish. They suck in their prey. They vacuum suck it. So watch this. Oh, and look at that smile. They are always smiling. That's a happy Mata Mata. Enjoying his snack. Look, you can see the fish's head popping up. Hello! <laughs> he is such a cool turtle. And these turtles, they can get about that big, just the shell. Monstrous animals. And they have a big leaf-like head. They're the ultimate animal when it comes to camouflage. Because they look like a leaf. There's no other animal on the planet that looks like a Mata Mata turtle. Maybe some extinct amphibians that lived around back in the day, like those salamanders with the triangle heads back in the prehistoric eras. But no, this guy's one of a kind in this era. And it's a pleasure just to be able to walk in my kitchen and look at him in the morning before I get, get on to work. Look at that, stretch up. And just like a soft shell turtle that you'd find in Florida, they have a snorkel nose. So instead of exposing the rest of his head to predators, he just pokes that little nostril right up, gets a breath and goes back on like he just did. I think he's hungry. That was a little, little guy. Oh, what's this you got here? A little, uh, little dead fish? That's disgusting. What do I look like to you? Trash? Huh? What do you, you wanna be Steve Irwin? Huh? 
Well, I'm gonna, you do it one more time, I'm gonna stab you in the eye with a soldering iron. How's that sound, little boy, huh? Huh? Okay. You gonna do that? Huh? Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So my theory is correct. They do not have a lot of jaw pressure. <laughs> you, there you go. <laughs> Good. But guys, it wasn't painful. They don't have a lot of jaw pressure. It looks scary, but in reality, the Mata Mata does not have a lot of pressure in those jaws. So it's not like a soft shell turtle that bites on you. It's almost gonna pull off your skin. It's pretty uh, gnarly to watch though for you guys, I'm sure. So let's do this. I'm gonna, I don't think he wants me to hand feed him anymore. So I'm gonna drop all these fish in and you're gonna watch him hunt naturally. Boom, did you see that? Look at that, oh my God. Amazing, he's gonna go again. Uh -oh. oh, that vacuum just sucking it down and pushing it down his throat. Look, there's a tail sticking out. That's wild. Look, his throat jiggles a little because the fish is still alive. Amazing. All right, guys, it's time to feed the snakes. And if you know snakes, we all know that they eat rodents for most species. Now, if you're squeamish, well, don't worry. These rats were humanely put down. They're frozen in bags and we thawed them out, and now we're gonna feed them to the snakes. So if you're squeamish, I'm sorry, maybe you wanna skip ahead a little bit. Uh, maybe Caleb will edit a little time when he can skip too, when it's, we stop feeding these snakes. But uh, come on, stick around, it's gonna be fun. Now first off, we're gonna be feeding the Gaboom. Look at this guy, get a nice close look at that face. Notice, his eyes are very milky, they have a bluish hue to them. He's going through shed. Now when snakes shed, their skin, their scales are made of keratin. It's the same material as your fingernails and your hair. So when they grow, they break out of that old skin and the new, clean, beautiful skin is underneath. So the second he's done shedding, he's gonna look so beautiful. But the blue shoe, that's an indicator that he's temporarily blind or you can barely see. Because on the eye itself, there's a skin cap that comes off when they shed. So temporarily, he can't see, which makes it very dangerous to work around them. Good thing is, when you work with venomous snakes, you want to use all the tools you can get. So I got these nice, long, safe tongs to use to feed this guy. And he's going to be eating a rat pup. I'm going to unlock this cage. There we go. There we go. Now I'm just going to slide this glass open. I'm going to offer the rat. Oh, he already is picking up the scent. He knows it's there. Oh, oh, look at that, look at that, wow. Okay, so he's not doing it fully, but what the boom vipers do is when they grab their prey on the wild, they'll grab it by the chest, inject the fangs into the body, let the venom seep into it, but they hold the rodent above the ground a couple inches so it can run and scurry all it wants, but it has nothing to kick off to push the snake. So he holds it up in the air so he's not thrashing with the animal. It's a very unique hunting technique that the Gaboon Vipers have. See, now what the snake is doing? He's using his fangs to maneuver the animal into his throat. So he went for the chest, and he had it horizontal towards his face, and now he's making it vertical, so it can go straight down the gullet. Now the interesting thing about Vipers is when they swallow their prey, they use their fangs to inch the animal down their gullet. So he's going fang by fang, fang, pull it in, fang, pull it in. And if you remember from the first video, they have the world's longest fangs of any venomous snake. So he's got some nice hiking poles to push in that rat, get down the gullet. He's making quick work of that rat. Now it's time to feed the bush vipers, and they eat little, little baby mice. They're called pinky mice, because they're small, baby, pink mice. But, you know, like I said, frozen thawed, we bought them all humanely killed. They're frozen in a bag, and we thawed them like a burrito, but it's not a burrito. It kind of looks like a little chewy gummy. I just eat it, it looks so good. I was kidding. That's why I don't have a girlfriend. Anyways, let's feed the bush viper. Wiggle, 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 wiggle
Do what the kaboon bit did. He didn't work his fangs. It like he's kind of working his fangs over, but he just engulfed it. He he didn't even eat it. He inhaled it. Now that's a healthy bush viper. Alright guys, I had so many animals to feed and take care of that we had to make a two-part video because there's so many because the video is already too long. So, if you want to watch the second video where we feed the other vipers, we feed the cobras, if you want to see that video, click right here on my belly button, right above the happy trail. Come on, follow the happy trail right to my belly button. Come on, click on it. Please, come on, click on it. Go ahead. Please click on my belly button. Please. I was dropped on the head of a child.